Good morning, everyone. We really appreciate the time you are spending with us this early morning. My name is Stefan Schipper, and I'm the moderator of today's Asian Impact Webinar. In today's Asian Impact Webinar, we will share with you the highlights of the key indicator special supplement on enhancing data management through the Statistical Data and Metadata Exchange, or SDMX standard. The report was released three weeks ago on 22nd of August, 2024. In today's data-driven world, the ability to effectively analyze, exchange, and disseminate statistical information is paramount for an informed decision-making. The SDMX standard has emerged as a means to streamline data activities and seamless sharing of data within national statistical systems and across the world. SDMX is an international standard to improve the efficiency, quality, and accessibility of statistical data. The report highlights the advantages of adopting the SDMX standard, particular in developing economies. In today's webinar, the results of ADB's statistical capacity building support on adapting SDMX in the region will also be highlighted. My co-author of the report, Brian Buffett, will run us through the highlights of the key indicator supplement on enhancing data management through the SDMX standard. After the presentation, we are very pleased to have colleagues from the National Statistical Office of Thailand, the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific, and the Pacific Community, who will be our panelists. Without further ado, I will give the floor to Brian Buffett. Thank you, Stefan. Good morning, everybody. The topic has been well introduced, so I will jump right in. The official statistics industry is under pressure. We're in an era of rapid technological advancements and evolving data sources. The official statistics industry faces increasing pressure to be faster, more efficient, and innovative. Core values of official statistics rooted in relevance and trust must be preserved. In today's data-driven world, the ability to efficiently exchange, disseminate, and analyze statistical data is paramount for informed decision-making and for effective policy formulation. From government agencies to private enterprises, organizations are overwhelmed with vast amounts of data collected from various data sources. This abundance of data presents both opportunities and challenges, which may need robust mechanisms to manage, analyze, and disseminate information effectively. But availability of data is not the issue. Despite the wealth of available data, data providers encounter numerous challenges in reporting and disseminating this information. Data quality, consistency, and interoperability issues. Data may just be applicable within organizations or stored in different formats, which makes it difficult to integrate and analyze. And difficulties ensuring timely and accurate data due to significant logistical and technical hurdles. Finally, meeting data dissemination expect expectations of end users. Data exchange and dissemination are integral parts of any national statistical system. Within the system, standardized frameworks play a pivotal role in ensuring the reliability, comparability, and coherence of statistical data. However, a national statistical system often involves multiple data organizations, data source organizations, each responsible for collecting and reporting specific sets of data. Each organization may have its own data collected collection processes and reporting formats, leading to potential inconsistencies and delays in reporting when data sets need to be merged. Integrating diverse data sources is critical for ensuring data quality and comparability. However, transforming data collected through different methods into a cohesive and meaningful data set can be complex. For instance, when data are sourced from various providers or systems that use different formats, spreadsheet, text file, digital file, et cetera, 
Integrating this data manually heightens the chances of errors and inconsistencies. Different collection formats, structures, and methodologies may require distinct skill sets, resources, and tools, making full coordination and oversight challenging and expensive. Additionally, when data sets are released only in spreadsheets or digital file format and are not stored in a centralized database, users may struggle to find the specific data that they need or to make effective use of it when they do. Not key challenges of national statistical systems. There's obstacles faced in collecting, integrating, and disseminating statistical data, ensuring data quality, addressing resource limitations, navigating legal and ethical considerations, and adopting modern technology. Overcoming these challenges is crucial for producing reliable statistical information to inform decision-making and policy formulation. The statistical data and metadata exchange is an international standard established to improve the efficiency quality and accessibility of statistical data. The SDMX framework provides guidance on standardizing and modernizing the collection, processing, and exchange of statistical data and metadata. SDMX is a global initiative sponsored by eight major international organizations, the Bank for International Settlements, the European Central Bank, the International Labor Organization, the International Monetary Fund, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the Statistical Office of the European Union, the United Nations, and the World Bank. These sponsor organizations have instituted and maintained common SDMX technical and statistical standards and guidelines, and they continue to collaborate to enhance statistical data and metadata management through SDMX. Together, they are working to streamline data and metadata exchange processes, offer capacity development programs, provide information technology infrastructure for efficient data sharing, and explore the need for future evolvement of the standards. SDMX offers numerous benefits for the management of statistical data, including enhanced efficiency, interoperability, and standardization. By providing a common framework for data and metadata exchange and sharing, the SDMX standard facilitates seamless communication between different systems and organizations. This standardized approach also improves data quality and timeliness, reduces duplication of effort, and enhances the comparability of statistical information across various domains. SDMX supports modernization of statistical data management practices by, offer by offering standardized and interoperable solutions adopting new technologies, facilitating official tool development, encouraging worldwide collaboration, and aligning with contemporary data sharing initiatives and global development goals. In 2008, the UN Statistics Commission endorsed SDMX as the preferred standard for the exchange and sharing of both data and metadata. With members of the UNSC collectively Agreeing yet SCMX provides a robust and effective solution for standardizing practices related to data and metadata exchange. In 2013, SDMX became an ISO standard. It is specifically designed to foster interoperable implementations within and between systems and be applicable to any organization responsible for the collection, processing, and exchange of statistical data and associated metadata. SDMX has two primary components. The SDMX information model, which serves as the central and fundamental component of the SDMX framework. It defines the structure of statistical data and metadata. More specifically, the model harmonizes the representation and exchange of statistical information across different systems and organizations. It also establishes a common language and structure for expressing statistical concepts to ensure consistency and uniformity in the representation of data. The second component is a detailed technical standard, which defines how to create IT tools that fully support the SDMX information model throughout the data lifecycle. 
recent STMX milestones. The most widely adopted version of STMX, version 2.1, was released in 2011. Well, the latest version of STMX, version 3, was released in 2021. The STMX user form, a place for STMX users to engage, ask questions, and collaborate, was introduced in 2022. Also in 2022, the ADB launched the STMX Foundation e-learning course, followed by the STMX Tools e-learning course in 2023. Structural data modeling is an essential part of STMX that ensures a standardized and consistent representation of statistical information. The structural data model serves as the foundation for organizing, describing, and exchanging data and metadata across diverse systems and organizations. The model can vary across different statistical domains, as some data concepts may be essential in one domain, but not relevant in another. For instance, while sex may not be relevant in a consumer price index, it holds significance for many sustainable development goal indicators. By identifying and defining statistical concepts, specifying data structures, and allowing interoperability, structural, structural data modeling in STMX promotes seamless data exchange, consistency, and the efficient implementation of the STMX standard. This plays a crucial role in quality assurance, metadata description, and the transformation of data sets, making it an integral part of STMX's goal to provide a universal framework for statistical data exchange. Free, high quality open source software tools are available to facilitate SDMX adoption. There is an array of freely accessible tools available to aid in the implementation of SDMX. These tools serve different purposes within the SDMX framework, such as data modeling, data collection, data conversion, data validation, metadata management, and data dissemination. But there are barriers to change. In numerous STMX adoption surveys, the barriers are consistently the same. Lack of resources, lack of training, knowledge of STMX, lack of support for STMX and in-house developed tools. Nevertheless, many national statistical offices and central banks have adopted STMX and continue to expand its usage to additional data domains and to additional data lifecycle stages. Asian Development Bank as a leader. In 2020, the Asian Development Bank launched a technical assistance project to support capacity enhancement in the national statistical data systems of selected countries in Asia and the Pacific, with goals to produce high quality statistical information using modern technology, innovative data, advanced methods, and best practices. Enhancing capacity in implementing STMX was a secondary goal. This year's special supplement to key indicators for Asia and the Pacific highlights the advantage of adopting the STMX standard by presenting the results of the aforementioned project. ADB's technical assistance in the context of STMX has yielded significant outputs and outcomes. The Thai National Statistics Sharing Hub, ADB Econ Economy Assessment Survey, and ADB's STMX e-learning courses collectively contribute to enhanced data accessibility, informed decision-making, and capacity building in statistical systems. These initiatives underscore ADB's commitment to supporting its member economies in achieving robust and reliable statistical systems. Recognizing the importance of standardized and efficient data dissemination, the Thailand National Statistical Office has taken the initiative to establish a modern platform. This platform is designed to serve as a centralized hub for data dissemination, fully compliant with the STMX standard and practices. The Statistical Sharing Hub is a comprehensive repository that houses a diverse range of indicators, such as socioeconomic data, population statistics, and SDGs. 
The statistics sharing hub is not just a repository of data, it is an interactive platform equipped with advanced features to meet the diverse needs of the users. Table and chart generation, download functions, and the one of the most powerful features of the hub is its SDMX API, which allows for machine to machine data transmission. One of the key outputs of ADB assistance is the implementation of SDMX in the Thailand National Statistical Office National Statistical System. The implementation of the SDMX standard is a significant step forward in modernizing and enhancing the efficiency of data sharing, improved data quality, and enhanced data accessibility. In 2021, the ADB conducted a survey in the Asia Pacific region to gather insights from national statistical offices regarding their awareness, integration and implementation of SGMX within their national statistical systems. The key objectives of the survey were one, to assess the level of awareness and integration of the SGMX standard within NSOs, and two, to identify the specific priorities and requirements of NSOs for implementing SDMX. A total of 31 out of 49 Asian Development Bank regional member economies participated in the survey. And the results provided a comprehensive understanding of several key areas. The level of interest among national statistical offices in using the SDMX standard, the varying levels of interest and usage of SDMX, the specific areas of focus for national statistical offices in implementing SDMX, the benefits that national statistical offices perceive in adopting the SDMX standard, and the challenges faced by national statistical offices in the adoption and implementation of SDMX. The survey results indicate a substantial emphasis on adopting and utilizing the SDMX standard to improve data and metadata dissemination to external uses, users. This underscores the priority given to ensuring that data shared with the public and other stakeholders is standardized, accessible, and reliable. Following closely is the focus on enhancing metadata management and standardizing statistical business processes, which highlights the importance of improving internal metadata management practices and ensuring consistency in statistical operations across different areas. The top implementation challenge was the lack of relevant tools and training resources. This challenge was nominated by eight of the 31 participating national statistical offices, which emphasized the critical need for accessible and effective training programs and tools to facilitate the adoption of SDMX. Following closely were two other significant challenges the need to obtain support from subject matter statisticians, and a lack of financial and or human resources was also a major concern. The ADB Economy Assessment Survey has significantly influenced the development of capacity building resources for SDMX. The survey identified a lack of relevant training tools as the primary challenge faced by NSOs in implementing STMX. In response, the ADB has collaborated with UN Statistics Division, SCAP, and CAP to develop and conduct comprehensive e-learning training programs. These programs are tailored to accommodate different levels of expertise. Participants can choose to undertake the STMX Foundation course, the SDMX tools course, or both, depending on their needs and experience. We have looked at the feedback from the graduates of the various SDMX e-learning courses. In total, 560 learners successfully completed the SDMX foundation course, and over 60 completed the SDMX tools course. For the foundation course, the majority of graduates provided high ratings, marking either excellent or good across all specific aspects of the course. 95% praised the clarity of the topics. 96% were impressed with the presentation style and delivery of the course lecture. And 89% found the content highly relevant to their work. 
Overall, the foundation course received consistently high ratings with 96% marking either excellent or good. For the tools course, an overwhelming majority of graduates rated all specific aspects of the course with excellent or good ratings. 94% praised the clarity of the topics. 96% were impressed with the presentation style and delivery of the course lecturer. And 91% found the content highly relevant to their work. The overall rating received similarly. High ratings with 94% marking the course as either excellent or good. In summary, we identified the profound impacts of SGMX on global statistical practices. The increasing adoption of SGMX by national statistical offices, where SGMX usage is gaining traction throughout the entire data life cycle. And we've also observed a significant potential for innovation and efficiency that SGMX offers. Furthermore, the importance of structural data modeling cannot be overstated. SGMX provides a framework for organizing and structuring statistical data, enhancing its usability and interoperability. However, we must also acknowledge the challenges, such as the need for upskilling among practitioners and the demand for open source tools to facilitate SDMX implementations. In response to these challenges, the inclusion of SDMX e-learning courses has emerged as a vital initiative. These courses signify the ADB's commitment to building capacity trainings and fostering a community of practice around SDMX implementations. Overall, the ADB experience with SGMX highlights two main lessons. First, there's a strong regional and global demand for the implementation of SGMX, reflecting its value and relevance in modern statistical practices. Secondly, online learning has proven to be an effective strategy for upskilling practitioners and promoting the widespread adoption of SGMX. And to support your continued learning about SGMX, Please take note of a few resources on the slide, which I believe have also been shared with you in the chat. And thank you very much. Back to you, Stefan. Thank you, <clears throat> Brian, for the very clear presentation. I would now like to introduce our three distinguished panelists in today's Asian Impact Webinar. Our first panelist, is Ms. Haichanuk China Provat, who is the director of the Statistical Forecasting Division of the National Statistical Office of Thailand, and was before the director of the National Statistical System Management Division of the Thailand NSO. Our second panelist is Dennis Groflis, who is an advisor in statistical process modernization for the Statistics for Development Division of the Pacific Community, SBC. Dennis has been leading the implementation of the SDMX-powered DOTSTAT statistical database as part of the Pacific Data Hub initiative. Dennis is also supporting organizations in optimizing the information production process with a strong focus on efficiency gains to support data-driven policymaking. Our third panelist is Diane Shayani, who is a statistician at the Statistics Division of the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific. Diane coordinates the data team responsible for the Asia-Pacific SDG Gateway and co-authors the annual Asia-Pacific SDG Progress Report. Diane is passionate about making sense of data for better decision. I would like to start with Ms. Hai Chanuk. Could you please share Thailand's experience in building a national system of data exchange and dissemination leveraging on the SDMX standard? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Stefan, and good morning, everyone. Uh, could you please share the slide? Oh, thank you. Okay, 
It is wonderful to see so many of you join us today on this webinar. I am eager to share our experience on statistical data and metadata, data exchange for enhancing data management and to hear your valuable insights. Thank you for being here and I hope you find our discussion valuable. Let's start my presentation. Next slide, please. This slide shows Thailand's FDMX activities from 2020 to now. Over 500 officials completed online SDMX training and ADB, UNSD, and UNSCAP supported Thai National Statistical Office in implementing SDMX. We have produced educational videos in college e-learning and developed starter data sets with five pilot agencies, such as the National Economic and Social Development Council and Department of Provincial Administration, Ministry of Interior. Additionally, we have held annual SMA training for 40 officials since 2020. Next slide, please. National Statistical Office of Thailand has adopted the SDMX standard to support the use of open data in the country. The two main tools we use are the Fusion Metadata Registry and the Step Suite. Why I won't delve into the detail of the process, I would like to highlight that the SDMX standard has been implemented to integrate Thailand's statistical data, ensuring a structured format and centralized dissemination to the StatHub platform at uh, stathub.nso.go.th. Next slide, please. The SDMX standard offers several key benefits to organizations manage, managing data it simplifies data collection and storage. Reducing the need for data cleansing, it also promotes global standardization in data dissemination, making data more accessible and user-friendly. The standard supports automatic updates, ensuring that data remain current. Add additionally, it facilitates efficient data exchange between organizations by providing metadata alongside the data to enhance understandings. That concludes my part of the discussion. Thank you, ADB panelists and participants for your attention and for giving me the opportunity to share Thailand's experience with you. I look forward to hearing from the other speakers and to any questions you might have later. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chanok. I would now like to give the floor to Dennis. Could you please share with the participants how small island countries could benefit in adopting the SDMX standard? Thank you, Stefan. Hi, everyone. So, uh, first, uh, thank you to the day ADB for this uh, excellent publication uh, and for the opportunity to be here today. Uh, the uh, this special supplement of the key indicators publication is uh, is a significant contribution uh, to the community as it provides a comprehensive overview of how the SDMX standard can support uh, improvements in data management processes. Uh, as as Brian explained in his in his uh, uh, presentation of the of the publication, uh, data driven decision making and evidence based policy making are placing a significant pressure on the demand uh, for high quality statistics across all aspects of society. Uh, this requires producers of statistics to deliver more relevant, more timely, more accurate statistics, uh, with at the same time uh, a request to improve the overall efficiency. Uh, of the organization and the ability to respond uh, to increasingly volatile uh, data requests. Uh, 
So SDMX is a, is a standard that is uh, made to support uh, this type of requests. But just to uh, recap a bit on the evolution of use cases uh, of SDMX over the 20 past years. So SDMX is out for 20 years or, or even a, a bit more now. But the, at the start, um, the, the use case was mainly focused on statistical reporting. So uh, national agencies uh, sending data to international agencies with a strong focus on economic time series at the start. Uh, over the years, the use case has evolved uh, a lot, and SDMX now uh, broadly supports statistical dissemination, uh, covering use cases like data discovery, data reuse, data integration, and things like that. Um, this respect software, such as the DOSTAT suite, uh, powered by, by SDMX and community-based, uh, uh, has played a significant role. But now, um, uh, the, the current developments seem to be uh, pushing SDMX towards uh, covering broader range of data types, uh, such as microdata, geospatial data, big data. Uh, this can be observed in the features that are uh, part of the latest version of the, of the standard, SDMX 3.0. And uh, perhaps another emerging uh, trend that appears is to use SDMX not only for exchanging data between organizations or with users, but also to support efficient exchange of uh, data and metadata between activities inside uh, the statistical processes. So we can see uh, the, the SDMX evolved a lot in terms of the use cases covered over, over the past 20 years. Um, and the ability to cover uh, uh, so wide use cases, it's also linked to the fed, fact that uh, SDMX is a multi-level uh, standard. So uh, there, there are things that cover both the technical and IT level and the content level. Um, at the heart of the, the, the standard, uh, there is the information model that provides a vocabulary to describe data and metadata uh, in a standard, standardized ways. And then we have also formats and syntaxes that allows uh, representing concretely content to be exchanged. But on the content level, we also have, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, content-oriented guidelines that that uh, uh, step towards the content harmonization uh, with common code lists and concepts that help understand and reuse uh, the data. Then we also have uh, on a, on a more technical level the API and registry specification supporting uh, most advanced uh, uh, use cases requiring machine-to-machine uh, -machine communication. So to, uh, to get back to the, the Pacific uh, case where, where, where I'm from, I'm working at the Pacific community. Um, we established in the region the, the, the Pacific Data Hub um, that enhance uh, data accessibility and promote evidence-based policy making in the context of sustainable development for Pacific Island countries and territories. Uh, a significant initiative in this program was the adoption of the SDMX standards uh, alongside the, the .stat suite, uh, that is the, the software that we use uh, to, to support the Pacific Data Hub uh, statistical database. So the goal is to unlock uh, data access and support uh, uh, data management uh, in, the, in the region. And by ad adhering to the standard, the SDMX standards, uh, the Pacific Data Hub uh, ensures a good level of interoperability and, and facilitates data exchange uh, between different stakeholders like government agencies, international organizations, and research institutions. Um, uh, to share a bit uh, the, the journey we went uh, uh, through with the Pacific Data Hub, so the, the implementation initially focused on uh, dissemination of statistics. And at the first stage, uh, we encountered some challenges linked to open data principles, uh, like having uh, data licensed uh, in a way that it allows a redissemination uh, through a regional database, or also having data uh, uh, structured enough so it could be uh, integrated in a, in a statistical database at a, at a reasonable cost. Um, so, so the challenges in the first phase of the projects were mostly around feeding a dissemination database. And in this regard, SDMX uh, can, can really play a key role because it allows uh, specifying the, the templates uh, that, that, are, that are needed to, to transfer the data and also supports a validation of data and checking if data complies to an expected structure uh, for publication on a, on a database. Uh, in the second uh, uh, stage and in the, the most recent phase of the project, um, there's a drift of the, of the work towards improving the upstream statistical process. Uh, for instance, uh, this touches to uh, content harmonization, where we try now to have a greater harmonization of concepts and code lists across uh, different statistical areas to ensure a uh, stronger interoperability and linkability of that term. Uh, another example of, of upstream work uh, like this is the is in the area of design of statistical products. Uh, initially, uh, legacy tables, if I may say, were designed uh, 
uh, to be published on, on reports and were sort of tiny flat tables that were uh, ready to be uh, printed uh, in a way on a, on a paper document. But as maturity grows, uh, a greater advantage can be taking, taken from uh, SDMX by designing statistical table uh, from the start as large uh, multidimensional uh, data cubes. Uh, and this uh, supports uh, to a greater extent what is sometimes referred to as self-service analytics, uh, which allow users to answer themselves the, the advanced queries uh, by navigating relatively large and, and, and uh, multi-purpose tables. And this uh, reduces the need for manual processing of ad hoc requests um, by statistical organizations. So the main challenges, and this is uh, in line with what was mentioned by colleagues uh, uh, before, but were mostly in the area of skills. Uh, we need to learn SDMX to be able to use SDMX, even if it's consistent with the, the general practice in statistical offices, there's uh, some specific skills to acquire, obviously. Uh, there are some things in the area of availability of software and of open source or free software in some cases, and also uh, in the area of change management, because SDMX is not only about changing technology, it's also about uh, improving processes uh, uh, in a, a certain extent. Uh, but the benefits uh, are significant also, and they concern uh, the improvement of quality of statistical output and uh, the overall efficiency of statistical processes, which is something that that uh, statistical organizations are, are pressured uh, to to uh, to improve uh, in in current context. So to conclude, um, by, uh, global standards such as DMX are key enablers in the in the adoption of state of the art data management practices and uh, in the improvement of uh, uh, statistical production and dissemination processes. Um, in the Pacific region, uh, the Pacific Data Hub uh, was the initiative used to support uh, the, the setup of, of uh, centralized data portals and with the, the ultimate goal of, uh, uh, goal of, uh, of strength strengthening the processes and the trust uh, in official statistics in the end. Um, and also last, uh, uh, perhaps but not uh, least, uh, is that the global standards like SDMX are really an enabler for uh, regional uh, or global cooperation as they allow working on common skills, common tools, common processes across organizations. Uh, um, this uh, standard uh, offers a huge potential for collaboration uh, within a global community uh, to achieve common objectives uh, in the, the statistics uh, sector. So thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Dennis. I would like to give now the floor to Diane. Could you please share the benefits of SDMX for an informed decision making and how economies in Asia and the Pacific can benefit from adopting the SDMX standard? Thank you, Stefan. And it's a very uh, big pleasure for me to be here speaking about this topic with you and with the colleagues online. Um, I wanted to take a step back and uh, mentioned that when I first heard about STMX, um, things were very different uh, because, you know, resources were very scarce. Uh, there are not many um, implementation tools. And even some of my colleagues discouraged me. They said, you know, it's a very niche topic and I don't think it's going anywhere. Um, so that was my first uh, time I heard about STMX, uh, when, but that was many years ago. And now the landscape has changed quite a lot um, as, as other panelists have said there's a wealth of materials, including online courses, um, and some of these courses cater to both beginners and advanced users. Um, and also there's many tools um, that you can use for implementing the standard. Um, and also many of these tools are open source and can be used for free. So now it has become much, much easier to learn and to implement STMX. And because of that, um, we are seeing now that many countries are deciding to adopt the standard. Um, they see the benefits of open data and interoperability. As, as data becomes even more important for the world today, um, having the data available and open, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite crucial for all the organizations. Um, and SCMX facilitates that because we can have a decentralized data um, ecosystem where data can come from different sources, but they can all be um, harmonized and exchanged uh, using the same standard. Um, it also simplifies um, the exchange of data and the reporting to international organization and other stakeholders as well. 
So it, it really smooths the way that data can um, can travel uh, from dif from different places to different places. Um, and we, we are also seeing a, a shift also in the international community um, uh, approach to STMX. Uh, we have, as, as we are, you're witnessing today, we have uh, many organizations um, such as the Asian Development Bank, ADB, the Pacific Community, um, and also others outside of the region like OECD and IMF, and even my own organization, uh, the United Nations SCAP, which are at the forefront of supporting STMX implementation. And all these organizations are offering their expertise and resources to assist countries in building capacity and implementing the standard. And one of the examples of that is in the special supplement, um, which is the case of the Maldives uh, Bureau of Statistics. Um, they have a um, transition from a very manual process of uh, requesting data from different providers, and then data comes in different formats, and they have um, uh, processed the data in Excel files and formatted in these Excel files, and then finally uploaded this uh, files to their website. And so if someone was interested in, in looking at the uh, country data, they'll have to navigate you know, hundreds of Excel files uh, to find what they're looking for. And oftentimes, uh, the data was not harmonized. Um, they were using different, um, different names for different geographies, for example, um, and so on. Um, but the Maldives Bureau of Statistics um, realized the, the importance of standards, and they also wanted to streamline and, and make their reporting of data easier and faster. So they have decided to adopt the STMX standard and use the open source tool, the one that also other colleagues mentioned today, the .stat suite, um, to manage the data. And that, that shift really um, changed the way that the, the data flows, um, now becoming much easier for, for the data to be reported by the, by the different data providers in, in the country, and then uh, be validated and then published on their da data portal. And like the Maldives, other countries in Asia Pacific have also embarked in this journey, including Thailand that is here today, uh, but also Cambodia, Indonesia in the ASEAN region, um, Kyrgyzstan in Central Asia, and now also more recently, uh, Fiji and Samoa uh, in, the, in the Pacific region. So all these countries now are embarking in, in this journey of um, adopting SDMX and modernizing their uh, data flows and um, data portals. And I think um, in conclusion, um, really the SDMX standard has come a long way and the adoption continues to grow, as you see and the increasing support from international organization and the availability of resources are making it even easier now to implement. So I really encourage you all to explore the, the, the report as well as the other materials and resources about STMX and consider how it can improve your data management processes. And do not hesitate to reach out to me and my colleagues presenting here today. Uh, and we'll be very happy to work with you on STMX and really, um, improving and streamlining how data is published and shared um, um, across different uh, organizations. So thank you very much for your attention and I look forward to the discussion. Back to you, Stefan. Thank you very much, Ms. Chanok, Dennis and Diane. We already have some questions in the Q and A box. Um, I would like to start with the first question. It acknowledges there's no doubt that SDMX offers for the national statistical offices an opportunity to make information sharing in national statistical offices more efficient. Um, I think we have an excellent example by Thailand. Ms. Chanoka, I'm very pleased that you are one of our panelists today, because the first question particular asked on ASEAN countries who have already a very advanced implementation of SDMX. And maybe 
Ms. Hachanuk, if you can uh, once more share your journey, how you have implemented this impressive statistics sharing hub in Thailand, and maybe also how other countries can benefit from your experience in implementing the SDMX standard, because the question is also, what are the major problems you have encountered so that also other economies in Asia and the Pacific, and in particular in the Asian economies, can benefit from your journey? The floor is yours, Ms. Heid Thank you. Thank you, Stefan, and thank you for the, the creation from, from New York. Okay, uh, actually, I think as uh, Diane mentioned that several countries in the ASEAN also uh, try uh, using the SDMX. Uh, for Thailand, uh, in Thailand, we can, we, we can start using SDMX by addressing the fact that many agencies are not familiar with SDMX and maybe res uh, resist time to change. It's important to begin by highlighting the visible benefit that SMX can offer showing how it can be advantage for everyone involved. And uh, may, may I add more related to the ASEAN country uh, or, or AMS, uh, we have the, we have the, we call for the ASEAN community, Satisfaction community, we call the ASEAN Health ASEAN Framework. I, uh, Indonesia, uh, BPS Statistics Indonesia uh, asked Thailand NSO uh, to share and to give the, maybe to share the experience using the SEVMX in the near future. This is a, the project between ASEAN country that we call ASEAN Health ASEAN Framework. Uh, but I think the Philippines, the PSA, I think they also use the SDMX, but I'm, I'm not sure the, the detail for the, the PSA. That is my answer, Stefan. Thank you very much, Ms. Haichanuk. And may I ask you, Brian, I think the PSA has also answered our um, country economy survey, which we have conducted in 2021 about their plans on SDMX. Hi, Stefan. Thank you for inviting me to respond to the question. I'm not uh, familiar with the mm -hmm specific situation now with regards to the Philippines, but I can follow up uh, after the session bilaterally and provide an answer to the respected uh, participant. Thanks. Thank you. If I briefly recall, the um, PSA has answered that they have plans to use SDMX um, in the future but checking um, on their challenges and going ahead with the adoption of SDMX, the Philippines first mentioned the lack of the relevant tools for implementing SDMX and they were still waiting for a broader user community to establish SDMX and that they are lacking financial and human resources. Diane, may I also ask, because this question was also on the ASEAN economies, I think you have um, already touched on other ASEAN economies who have implemented SDMX. You mentioned, for example, if I recall correctly, Cambodia and Indonesia. If you can share more information, Diane. Yes, thank you, Stefan. Um, so um, STMX really works for any type of organization, uh, small or large. Um, actually, even it doesn't necessarily need to be adopted only by the National Statistics Office. It, it can be also uh, adopted by any organization that um, wants to um, exchange data. So the ones that produce data, 
or um, and that want to to share data across the system. Um, in in the case of um, of uh, ASEAN region, um, the, the there has been quite a lot of support from different organizations, um, including as as uh, Ms. Hatay Chanok said uh, for Thailand, um, and also for Cambodia as well. Um, for the Philippines, um, I, I'm not aware of um, of a project uh, in implementation of STMX, but if there is that uh, desire to to adopt this um, this standard. I think that there will be plenty of organizations uh, ready to support uh, PSA on that. Um, um, yes, and I actually I wanted to reflect on uh, on what uh, Ms. Hatajchenok also said that um, uh, Thailand and Indonesia are are grouping together to 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 create a network of um, STMX uh, professionals. I think that that's a, that's a very good uh, initiative, and that shows how as as more countries are adopting it. Um, there's it's a growing community now of practitioners uh, that help each other, that exchange information, um, and that that we see that there's a huge potential of that, especially in the ASEAN region. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, Diane, may I ask the next question that is in the Q&A box for Dennis? Um, it's touching on the SDGs. Um, it's a 2030 agenda and the question is how can SDMX accommodate to a more global metadata um, driven approach that the SDG 2030 agenda will be achieved? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Stefan, and thank you for the question. Um, Yes, so SDG is uh, is uh, the SDG reporting is uh, is a very uh, good case in terms of SDMX uh, because it's it's quite advanced. Uh, there are working groups and it's uh, it's supported by the the UNSD where there are official uh, data structure definitions and metadata structure definitions that uh, frame the the reporting from countries uh, around uh, uh, SDG indicators. So I think this is really a case where. Uh, SDMX is, is used uh, very very efficiently and to to a, a, a big part of its potential. Um, now there are uh, uh, different different uh, uh, cases where it may be useful to extend uh, SDGs for national purposes, for instance, by um, adding indicators or having additional breakdowns for indicators, additional levels of details for existing uh, breakdowns, such as the you know, lower levels of geographies or additional additional uh, breakdowns relevant for, for national uh, development plans. Um, and this this is something that can be accommodated. And I think it, it, it's the subject of some specific uh, uh, guidelines uh, from the, the SDG working groups and from the UN who is managing this. Um, and regarding the metadata driven part, but as uh, uh, soon as you have uh, structured uh, data and metadata that is uh, are represented according to a standard uh, such as SDMX, then uh, all the, the metadata driven uh, approach is, is, uh, is becomes possible uh, when uh, we see um, an application like the dot start suite that is used as, as data portal by, by many organizations uh, across the world. It's, it is fully uh, metadata driven in the sense that there is nothing embedded about the specific content. The content is presented according to the SDMX metadata that is defined. So uh, everything becomes driven by the content itself in terms of structural metadata the, the, and the content that is uh, the data itself and the, the descriptive information you can provide as, as a, a reference metadata as it's called. I hope it answers the question. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Dennis. We have one more question, which is about the IMF's SDDS standard, if it encompasses um, SDMX. Um, may I ask Diane if you can elaborate on this? Um, okay, I think um, maybe I'm not the best person to answer this, uh, but I do understand that um, the SDDS uh, um, um, standard of IMF um, uh, includes the SDMX as well, uh, but perhaps other colleagues could confirm. Diane and Brian, would you like to add something? 
Uh, simply that uh, I concur with, and to my knowledge, the IMF data flows and metadata flows are all modeled in SDMX. And they're one of the lead organizations. They've had uh, quite advanced projects in deploying SDMX feeds throughout all of their member countries for quite a number of years. Thanks. Thank you, Brian. May I ask, we have two more questions and we are a bit short of time. So I would like to ask the next question or direct it to Dennis. It's about the API. For example, the question is what would small sized international organization do as an in initial phase if they would like to publish data using the SDMX standard. For example, we have also implemented data dissemination according to the SDMX standard in our statistical database, um, which is a key indicators database. But as this question is particular on small international organization, Diane, maybe you can take this question. Uh, Dennis, you can take this question. Okay, yes, uh, thank you, interesting question. Uh, yes, so for exposing content to the API, um, so you need to have data stored in, a, in an SDMX compliant database and to have uh, services that uh, uh, answer, that answering the, the requests on the, on the, on the web uh, to the, the API specification. Um, so to do that, you, you may have several options. There are some uh, open source and free to use software that exists that are published by, by uh, large international organizations. Uh, there's uh, in particular the SDMX reference infrastructure from Eurostat, and that is reused to some extent in the .stat suite uh, where the SDMX services from the .stat suite are, are based on, on this, uh, this reference infrastructure. Um, as a... Um, I think the easiest way to expose content uh, uh, to the SDMX API is to use an existing solution and set up an SDMX database in which you can you can store content and uh, but then make it available uh, through through the the API, the official API. So the the easiest way might be to to rely on on something like .stat suite where the, this is uh, provided uh, out of the box huh, with the .stat suite as it's it's uh, the database uh, of the .stat suite is uh, communicates with the the application through uh, through the SDMX API and content is is de facto immediately available through the through the API. Um, so I, I would rely on an existing solution uh, if, if, if it's, uh, when it's possible or not to have the to, to support the cost of developing own solutions uh, to to expose content to to the SDMX uh, API. Um, now, just to say some words uh, in addition on the the relevance of of the API, but. It can be. It's really opening the door to to interoperability with with many other kinds of applications, and there are uh, you can access content uh, uh, with with an uh, office uh, tools like Excel or Power BI that can connect directly to SDMX endpoints. Uh, Power BI is an uh, an official connector uh, uh, certified by Microsoft uh, to access to access content in SDMX format. Um, there are uh, statistical tools like R, Python. Uh, there are even things for Stata, and uh, where uh, when data is accessible to the API, you can you can have it uh, available to to statistical tools of all kinds, uh, where analysis can continue. There are also plugins for web applications, uh, like um, WordPress, Drupal. These are things that we use in the in the Pacific. We have plugins to to connect uh, to our SDMX database from the CMSs that are used uh, to to uh, develop the websites in countries, and uh, uh, and then, of course, it's uh, everything is possible if you develop uh, yourself, or if you have web developers or general developers that are that are uh, able to to develop their own uh, uh, applications connecting to the SDMX API. So it's really opening uh, the possibilities to to connecting with with really a, a really broad ecosystem of software and and use cases. Uh, but to answer specifically the question uh, in. Uh, to, to not, not to have to pay the full price of developing uh, uh, SDMX API connectivity, the best is probably to reuse an existing solution, maybe the, the .stat suite that, that provides this uh, out of the box. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Dennis. And thank you. We are now running out of time. Thank you so much, Ms. Haichanok, Dennis, and Diane. I would like to take this opportunity to thank everyone for supporting today's Asia Impact webinar. Before we close today's webinar, we would like to invite you to join 
our next Asian Impact Webinar on the Asian Development Outlook September 2024 launch, which will be held on 25 of September 2024 from 2 to 3 p.m. Manila time via Zoom. Please do also check out the Asian Impact Webinar page and our Chief Economist's X account for more updates. Thank you and see you again.